Hey, last video was about building the case for my DTL computer, which consists out of those cards. I was really surprised how much traction or how much interest this video gained uh, in the homebrew computer community. And many people asked me to make an uh, overview of how my logic gates and the other parts of this computer works. So. Today, I want to make take a look at how the computer I'm going to build is, is built and how the logic parts uh, are working. For that, I have a little breadboard which is currently set up to test those cards, uh, which are uh, D flip flops, by the way, uh, half a register. And I'm going to clear that breadboard take you closer to the breadboard and make you or show you how um, how all of this works let's get started uh, take 75 okay so I pulled out the whiteboard to explain things uh, and apologies for my dirty whiteboard uh, the IKEA whiteboards aren't that great or the IKEA whiteboard markers I don't know so the entire logic is based on a couple of simple gates. Obviously, we have the NOT gate, right? We have the OR gate. And we have the NAND gate. These are pretty much all the gates where the complete, complete architecture is based off. How do I, did I construct those gates? So the NOT gate is fairly simple. You have 24 volts coming in. If the input's at, lo at zero, the transistor doesn't conduct. So the current flows from the 24 volts through the 10 kilo ohm resistor to the output. If the input goes to one, the transistor starts to conduct. The electricity goes through the resistor, through the transistor to ground. And so this potential here gets ripped down to pretty much ground. So the current rather flows through the transistor because the way is easier. Current, current is lazy, so the current rather goes through the transistor, which is the easier path than through the circuitry that comes at the output. So this gets pretty much to level ground. So that's the easiest of all the three gates. It's just the transistor and a resistor. Easy peasy. So I got out the breadboard. And so let's try to build such an inverter. For that, we need the transistor, All right? We need an LED for the output, which goes with a resistor. So, so it's only gonna have one input, so I'm gonna remove that second switch. So if we look at the data sheet of set transistor, um, we can see that if we lay it on the side that the markings are looking upwards, um, we have on the pin leg, on the first leg, the collector, the base and the emitter. On an NPN transistor, if on the base, so the middle pin is current, it conducts current from the collector to the emitter. What that means for us is that our resistor our resistor to the high voltage or 24 volt is on the collector, right? So we're gonna connect the most left leg to 24 volts. Then we need a second resistor to protect the base because if we would just put 24 volts into the transistor, it would not be happy about this. We're gonna put a second transistor. I only use 10K resistors for simplicity. And then we connect this input to our switch. And then the emitter 
gets directly connected to ground, right? And then the switch gets also connected to 24 volts. And then we have the output, which is blue. And the output is on the same first pin where the resistor is. So the collector of the, th of the transistor. And we're gonna hook it up to here. So, that's our simple gate. Let's put that away. And now, when I turn on my power supply, and I'll turn off the light here, we can see the LED is glowing. And as soon as I push the button, it should go off. And it did go off. So we have now a simple inverter gate. Button is not pressed, light is on, output is on, button is pressed, output is off. Very simple. Good, to the next gate. So this is the simple NOR gate. I haven't listed it, but I most of the time use the NOR gate. But if you leave away that part, you have an, a, an OR gate, which I sometimes also use. Um, but it's fairly simple. It's two diodes. So you have, if input A is on and e input B is off, the current flows through the first diode and you have a high at the output which this is a NOT gate that I explained earlier, turns the output off. Same with if B is 1 and A is 0, the current flows through the blower diode, mixes in here and goes into the transistor. And if both, are th both the inputs are on, obviously still on. So this is an OR or then an OR gate. So to build such an OR gate, we need the second switch here. And first, we're gonna build an OR gate. For that, we're gonna use those diodes. Those diodes, they conduct from the part that has no black stripe to the part who has a black stripe, and not the other way around. So if we put in this diode like this, so with the black stripe looking at the right, and we take a second diode, but plug it in so with the black stripe to the left we should have current flowing through that pin if current or is voltage hooked up to here or to here so let's try that so I now hooked up both the buttons to the diodes and now I'm going to hook up the output of the diode, or the part of the black stripe, to the LED. And now let's hook up 24 volts and look if it works. I again turn off the light. So when I push button 1, the LED goes on. If I push button 2, the LED goes on. If I both push both buttons, the LED goes on. So we have an OR gate. It's on when this button is pushed, or this button is pushed, or both. That is very cool. So can we make this an OR gate, so invert it? So for that, we learned in, this, in the previous time how this transistor can invert things. So let's build the same NOT gate that we built earlier with the collector to 24 volts and the base with a protection resistor don't forget the protection resistor, they're important. So we now hooked up the output of the OR gate that we just built previously to the collector via resistor of the inverter. And now we're gonna connect the output of the inverter to the LED and also the emitter of the inverter to ground. And now if I hook up 24 volts, we should again have an inverted 
OR gate. So the LED is on. If I push one button, the LED goes off. If I push the other button, the LED goes off. If I push both buttons, the LED goes off. So we successfully built an OR gate. To the next gate. Okay, so here we have the last gate, which is just an AND gate, or an AND gate actually, it's an inverted AND gate. So if both inputs are off, none of those transistors are conducting, so the current is again flowing from 24 volts through the 10 kilo ohm resistor out to the output. Then if A turns on, but B is off, this transistor turns on, so the current could flow down here, but it gets held up by the second transistor, so it goes nowhere, and it still rather flows to the output. If, current, if the B turns on and A is off, the current can't flow through the A transistor, so the B transistor doesn't even have a voltage on it. And then if both inputs are on, the current flows through the A transistor and the B transistor to ground, which again pulls the output to ground, so the output goes off. So to build such an AND gate, we need this time two transistors. So one of them here. And that starts off like normal, a normal inverter. So we again hook up the collector to 24 volts. Then we take a protection resistor to one of the inputs. And then the output it doesn't go to an output, but the output gets connected to the collector of the second inverter. Again, the second inverter gets protection resistor to the base and then the second resistor gets connected to ground. So we essentially just built an inverter but with two transistors in series. Now we're gonna hook up the inputs. So I now hooked the protection resistors inputs to the switch. And we're gonna hook up the output, which is like with the inverter after the first resistor. If I hook up 24 volts, the LED turns on. If I push one button, nothing happens. If I push the other button, nothing happens. And if I push both buttons, the LED turns off. That's exactly the behavior that we are expecting. So we built an AND gate. It only turns off if the button first button and the second button is pressed. So those were the simple logic elements that, for example, also this circuit board is based on. As you can see, every time when there is two transistors very close to each other, like here or here, this is usually a sign that this is an AND gate. Here you can see the diodes which form an OR gate. And so with all those logic gates together, I am building this computer. So this was a little bit a shorter video um, and that's also why I could produce it so fast. Um, and I will make in-depth videos about the cards as I designed them because I actually don't really have the fully designed computer yet. I do have the rough overview what the computer should be capable of and how it is working all together. But the individual parts and how it's designed uh, gate by gate is, uh, is not yet actually done except if I have actually built it. While I am building those cards, and I have uh, already two of those cards, and I need 14 of those cards, so I am assembling them, I will make definitely a video about this specific card and how it works, and explaining how it works. Um, and then we will continue up to the more complicated cards, because this is just a simple half of a register. I will definitely take you with me on this journey on uh, exploring how to design this computer. The gates that I have are very simple and that is on purpose um, because I can design all the logic that I need with those simple gates that I presented today and those concepts for those gates are very 
stable, so those gates work very well. I minimize the chance for bugs later to appear um, due to unstable circuitry. So this was it for this week's video. Um, I will definitely not make weekly updates. Um, we talked about this in the Discord a bit. And uh, also the comments said that, that they'd rather want to see videos with a topic and an update uh, than just weekly updates. So while this comes out a week later, it's just because it's a fairly simple video. Then we're gonna see how much time I have to, to progress further into the development of that computer. So thank you for sticking around. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. If so, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and um, I'll see you soon. Have a good one. I'm out. Bye.